What's going on my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So today I'm going to be talking about a lot of the random news uh, and mainly going to be talking about the Limit Break expansions. But before we get into that, there's just a couple of other tidbits of information that I wanted to go through for you guys just so you guys know uh, because I, I wanted to give you guys this information and this is probably one of the best ways to do it to show you guys in this video what's going on, okay? Um, so there are a couple of different things. First of which is the updated post from the Blitz Battle. Now, I, I can't remember if I mentioned it in my Blitz Battle video but they have updated it where essentially if you use the bandai friend captain like where it mirrors your own captain you actually receive less points because you'll get the base amount of points and that's that however if you actually use a an actual friend uta or a friend chopper or whatever you want to do for this event that character will receive a bonus 1.1 times points so make sure when you're farming to actually use a real friend captain instead of your own bandai friend captain you'll receive extra points and it, it, it's obviously just going to help you in this event so make sure to go ahead and do that we kind of found this out naturally through the stream last night but it is a little bit odd that they didn't tell us beforehand this should have definitely been the top post here on Otherwise, we would have had no idea. Um, but yeah, make sure to go ahead and use an actual friend, not a Bandai friend. So moving on to the next bit of uh, information, we had the official announcement of the uh, the treasure map Sugo Fest. Now, it does say in this event, if we scroll down a little bit, the bottom paragraph here, it mentions that for part one of this treasure Sugo Fest, certain treasure Sugo Fest only characters are back. Now, we didn't see that post initially because when we scroll down to the bottom where it shows what characters are available in part one, we can see that these treasure map rare recruit characters are going to be available in part one as well. Now, we don't know the current rates. We don't know how easy it is to, to actually pull these units, but it's kind of intriguing that they're back for some unknown reason. And especially when you look at the fact that when you go to part two and part three, those characters are not present. So I don't understand the reason why they made those characters in part one one because you know if you've already got a lot of the legends in part one you, you, you usually would save for part two or part three so it is a bit of a weird choice that they decided to do that i mean even if they put certain pools of them in part one then some in part two and some in part three that would be you know at least something better um dumping them all on part one is a bit of an odd choice in my opinion i'm not a big fan of that um they should have either made them all, all on you know all parts all together or just don't have it at all because i think it's a little strange uh personally you know some of these characters are okay uh i know that this otama um what does she do uh to boost if you boost slots heal 10 percent of the cruise max hp reduce resilience which isn't very useful this nami has a very interesting support if you use the special of the support unit um and you hit three perfects then you get an attack boost in the following turn like a really unique support there um you've got the kinemon who is okay attaches to odin and denjiro if you if the crew is inflicted with a lock chain multiply it reduces it by two turns and gives you a slasher and cerebral and attack boost bit of a weird one but uh namely this guy uh denjiro very good for kinemon and odin and if you use this special you do end of turn damage for three turns so it allows you to get around the resilience effect you've got otsuru which attaches to kinemon and odin and it reduces the support unit by one for their cooldown and makes the deck slots have matching slot effects at the start of the final battle pretty useful and then all of the onigashima straw hats all have pretty useful Useful supports um they don't see too much play this sanji is really good this sanji is the one i want the most attaching to nami or kinemon and when you use their special you get an orb block and reducing one turn of resilience the orb block being pretty key there and then you've obviously got these characters returning the perona and the vivi so you can pull these on the treasure sugo fest which is a bit of an interesting choice um so i just wanted to make a little bit of a you know, little bit of a note about those characters returning for part one only don't like that it's only on part one, but hey, at least they're back at the end of the day. Now, the next bit of information is pertaining to the actual treasure map, the film red treasure map versus Sanji. So we have the official announcement about what Sanji does. So here is his buffed captain ability when you go ahead and max his regular limit break. 3.75 attack and then can go up to 4.25 after a certain amount of perfects. It's okay, perfectly acceptable for a free-to-play captain. And then his special ability, removing attack down, removing poison, a thousand base attack for int character and then reducing one turn of nullify damage not a bad unit overall it does suck that his support effect is bad boosting base stats by 50 reduces cooldown by one every time another int character uses their special that's actually really good he has hunger removal yeah it's a pretty decent free-to-play sanji and really good artwork but you know obviously sanji aside there are a couple of other interesting effects obviously the first post uh, the first paragraph is talking about with the version 12.1 
it has the same thing about the boosted captain. So if you use a Bandai friend captain, you'll still get the same amount of points. However, if you use an actual friend captain with that booster, you will actually receive more points, which is pretty interesting. Uh, again, this is going to be nice for people that, you know, maybe struggle with treasure map or don't like to farm that much treasure map. It just makes it a little bit easier to get to those higher thresholds of point rewards because you get a free 1.1 bonus. I mean, it's just free points, right? So it's not even that bad. I think it's actually a pretty nice addition in all honesty. Now, everything else is pretty much mentioned the same. It says that the theme of of the treasure map like the actual map um, aesthetics itself will change to be kind of like what the film is based off of which is awesome then they also say here fights from battle one the battle rush boss fights and intrusion fights will have fights started from battle one the enemies of battle one will always have static stats so that they will not become stronger as your nav level goes up however they may apply various status effects to your crew so watch out interesting about this one so what they're saying is, is that instead of having a character at the start of the fight that just, you know, reduces your cooldown, then runs away, they're saying that there's going to be a gimmick that happens on Battle 1. I assume that there's still going to be some cooldown associated with it. I would sincerely hope so. Otherwise, it's going to make Treasure Map that much more difficult. But then it does say that, you know, there is a gimmick and the boss on Battle 1 doesn't change their HP. Um, so I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe they're trying to reduce the amount of speed farming captains. Maybe that's a way for them to do it. If they just have more gimmicks, it makes speed farming less viable. It totally depends on what the gimmicks of the boss are. Currently, as of the recording of this video, we don't know what kind of gimmicks are associated with this, but it's just interesting and I wanted to make note of it. Um, and then the other really interesting thing, we've got the full boosted list here. Nothing is really too surprising, but when you go down to the 1.2 times point boosters, you see that this is like a pretty typical, you know list of point boosted characters but then near the bottom you've got a bunch of movie characters uh, are all boosted here now you've got the movie legends as well you've got bullets you've got tesor you've got zephyr but shiki for some reason is listed as a 1.35 times point booster which through previous treasure maps has concluded that that character will be receiving a super evolution next so this means that Shiki is going to be the next 6 plus on One Piece Treasure Cruise, which is super exciting because we've seen what, what they've done with 6 pluses recently. Shiki's going to become amazing. I really cannot wait to see what they've got in store for him. But also, like, are they going to be giving the other movie characters 6 pluses, specifically uh, Zephyr and also Tesoro? But I mean, also Stampede Luffy with a 6 plus could be kind of cracked. We'll have to wait and see what they do. But it just gets me super excited because, I mean, that's going to bring on some level limit breaks for Shiki as well. Hopefully level limit breaks for the rest of them too. I I'm really excited to see what they do with it. So that that's just a really nice bit of information that we got today. Now we can talk about the limit break expansions that are coming to one piece treasure cruise starting on august 12th 1900 pst time so we've got the first one here which is bello betty and she actually does receive cooldown minus one and she also receives the recovery bind duration limit break ability so when you look at her abilities you know receiving a recovery bind minus one cooldown so she goes down to 11 i don't really think that's going to be that useful i don't think having that that ability of recovery bind is going to be super valuable in all honesty um but look i think that if this is a character you end up having to use for content and you need the expansion for some whatever reason then it's fine but definitely not the best character to be expanding i think you should definitely save your materials for something else and then the counterpart character of that Bello Betty is the Summer Rare Recruit Koala, and she actually does not receive any cooldown, and her other ability is, I think it's Enrage. Yeah, it is Enrage, and she's at a 12 turn cooldown, a bit of an odd choice that she doesn't receive any cooldown, uh, a little bit weird there, and considering she doesn't have a crewmate ability that reduces cooldown either, so yeah, that is a bit strange. Um, yeah, I don't think this is a character that you would go ahead and limit break expand. Once again, if this is a character you need to use for content, then sure. But uh, realistically speaking, you should probably save again for something a little bit more valuable. So this is an interesting one. Previous treasure map rare recruits Hina, Tashigi, and Makino are all receiving limit break expansions. I do only own two of them. The one I don't own is Hina, but we can talk about them and we'll see what's going on. So uh, we got Makino here who does receive minus one cooldown and her third ability that she receives is 
is going to be Recovery Bind. So that is a little unfortunate. I don't think that ability is too great overall. But the thing about it is, is this character special is very valuable. Full board of uh, slots into Recovery that goes through block slots and locks them for one turn. She has a crewmate ability that treats them matching for Cerebral and Free Spirit. She has a very good support effect, removing defense by two turns when you use a special on a Strength Free Spirit character. Makino is phenomenal and you know, if you are using her for content, then sure, Limit Break Expanding would be perfect because of the additional cooldown reduction. But in most cases, she's going to see play as a support, so probably not too valuable to use the materials to expand her because even that third ability isn't really that useful in the grand scheme of things. And then, of course, we've got the Tashigi counterpart character who also receives minus one cooldown, and her third ability is going to be... Fear resistance, that is interesting, okay. Well, what are her crewmate abilities? She will boost slasher and cerebral base attack, and then she also resists special reverse by two turns. Her special, does it actually reduce cooldown at all? It does reduce the crew special charge time by one turn. Okay, this is probably the best limit break expansion that we've seen thus far. The only issue with this is that fear resistance is very difficult to max. And then especially when you compound that with the fact that it is the treasure map rare character that essentially is never going to return. So I do like this expansion, definitely the best one that we've seen in the video thus far. However, getting that maxed will be difficult if you don't have the available tablets. But overall, this is definitely a worthwhile character. But again, most of the time, using as a support, attaching to a strength slasher unit, and when they use their special remove two turns of rainbow shield, it's a pretty valuable special ability to have. I think this is definitely the best one that we've seen pretty good expansion if I do say so. So on the news post we can actually have a look at Hina as well. So with Hina I believe she does receive minus one cooldown because the max is now red. So she does get minus one cooldown and she does get critical. So that's not super valuable unfortunately. But her special ability is pretty good. Attack down removal, threshold removal and color affinity to striker and cerebral. Again <laughs> color affinity to striker and cerebral is really nice. And she is an int character too. And then her support effect attaching to any int striker. So Uta specifically and if you use their special, remove two turns of threshold. I really wish I had this unit. This unit is actually very, very powerful. But unfortunately, in terms of limit break uh, expansion, that is uh, not very good. So yeah, you could probably avoid this one. Though, if you do continue to use this character alongside Uta, then maybe you want to go into that kind of thing. So we have two more characters to talk about, the first of which is going to be Limited Rare Recruit Kobe. So Kobe, with his expansion, receives minus three cooldown, okay. And his third ability, we'll go ahead and have a look at the unit itself to see what it is. It's going to be critical, that's a bit of a shame. Damn, that sucks. Uh, but he gets minus three cooldown, so he goes down to 11 turns, which is respectable. And it will completely remove bind off of one character that you choose, and then gives you a three turn 1.75 driven attack boost. So probably won't see a lot of play, but there were instances back in the day where this character was very good. He does make side slots matching for Driven. That's a pretty good crewmate ability, considering he is an int character, so that's not bad. Uh, but the fact that that third ability is critical is not very useful. But the, the minus three cooldown is very, very good. Um, I believe this character actually does see a bit of play in, uh, in Rumble. Well, you can use him in Rumble. Gives uh, Driven level 5 defense for the first 30 seconds, he gives a recovery buff, 25 CT, driven level 5 attack, level 5 recovery, level 5 speed, and also provides some recovery healing. Yeah, I, I did max this guy out and use him, I try, oh, at least I tried to use him in content at least in Pyro Rumble, but with the expansion, if you do use him in Rumble, that's going to be, again, very valuable because he gets additional statistics. Uh, and the minus three cooldown is obviously very good. Um, I guess if you do end up using him, then yes, go for it. But realistically, no, it's probably not the best. And then the final character that we're talking about for Limit Break expansions is going to be Hody Jones Limited Rare Recruit. So, let's see. He doesn't get any cooldown. Okay, so what's his base cooldown, actually? It's... Okay, so he needs a minus three, so he goes down to 12. He's a 12 turn cooldown, doesn't get any additional cooldown, but he does get double special launch. That is interesting. So what does his special actually do again? It does strength damage to all enemies, changes left character's slots into dex, strength, and psi, and then right column slots into tandem, quick, and int. And if your friend's captain slot is a strength, dex, or recovery slot, boost powerhouse character slot effects by 2.25 for one turn. Um, what? Yeah, okay, look. <laughs> Double special activation doesn't make a lot of sense with this. Unless if you end up using, like, uh, V2 Jinbei or something. Because, like, this character does work reasonably well, V2 Jinbei, I suppose. Um, I don't know. This is a bit of a head-scratcher. Um, 
Yeah, this guy's pretty whack. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can't really advise maxing this guy out, in all honesty. This guy's kind of whack. Yeah, probably not worth it. I think Kobe is definitely definitely a character you would see more play with rather than this uh, this Hody Jones character. Yeah, I think I think it's safe to say that you can you can save your materials for another character when you compare them to a character such as this. So with all of that being said, that wraps up all of the news that we have. And once we get the official breakdown of the enemy information for treasure map, we can go and start building some accessible teams for the treasure map versus Sanji. But that's going to wrap it up for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, then make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video. Bye.